perfect circle made out of plywood. You can try to make one yourself using a bandsaw or a jigsaw. Very difficult to do and they hardly ever come out to be this perfect. Dan, he has a concept using this tabletop saw and he's about to show you how to do it. My senior year in high school, my woodshop teacher was certain you could not cut a perfect circle using a saw like this. His reasoning was, because the blade is long and straight, you can't turn the wood. He wouldn't even let me show my concept. Well, that circle that Denise showed you earlier, it was cut using this saw. Now, we're about to make a perfect circle for our parabolic mirror, but first I gotta show you how to cut a piece of wood because it is so cool. This is a glass cooking pot lid. I got it at a yard sale for about a buck and I uh, took the handle off, took the rim off. What you have left is a glass parabolic shape. We're gonna use this glass shape to form fit our plexiglass and make our parabolic mirror. To cut a perfect circle using this tabletop saw, first you have to remove any of the guides. Second, you have to be willing to drill a hole in your tabletop. Now, it's not that big of a deal, just puts a couple little holes there. One thing you wanna make sure of is that you drill on the side that the motor is not on. Never ever drill on the side that the motor is on or you're gonna be needing a new saw. And to get started, you're gonna need one of these, a quarter inch bolt. You're also gonna need one of these, a drill with a quarter inch bit attached. Now, the first thing you wanna do is get, your, get a sheet of plywood that's bigger than your circle. We have plenty of excess here, so we don't have to worry about being in the perfect center when we drill our hole. We're gonna drill a hole in our piece of plywood. If you notice, I have a couple holes drilled in my tabletop already. One of these is just right for this because I've done it before. Now, you wanna lower your blade all the way down as far as it'll go to where there's no blade sticking up to start with. Next we're going to thread our bolt through the hole that we drilled and place it on our table saw. Now you'll notice this wood turns nice and neatly. One thing you want to keep in mind when you do this is that there's a blade spinning at 5,000 RPMs under here and it'll easily take a finger off. So we're going to use a push stick to hold it down over here. Gradually raise the blade until it chips into the bottom surface of the board. Then rotate the wood 360 degrees clockwise, cutting a shallow groove on the bottom. Continue to raise the blade slightly and rotate the wood a full 360 degrees again. Repeat this process as many times as needed. Exhibiting patience by slowly raising the blade will yield better results. Okay, and this is our cutaway piece. And this is our perfect circle. It fits perfectly in there. Next what we're going to do is we're going to use this as a pattern to cut our plexiglass. This is a 1 8 inch piece of plexiglass mirror. Now if you've ever tried to cut a piece of plexiglass on a table saw, you know that it chips a lot. So what we're going to do is use the same process as we use for the circle. We're going to start off with the blade low, then gradually work our way up. We're gonna cut the plexiglass slightly larger. What we're gonna do is put our guides back on, lock it down, and now we're gonna lower our blade all the way and cut our piece of plexiglass. With the blade barely exposed, make your first cut one sixteenth of an inch deep in the plexiglass. Then raise your blade as little as possible for each pass. By making several slow, shallow cuts, the plexiglass is left with a smooth finish and reduces the danger of the material getting locked in a fully raised blade. Now we're going to take a carpet knife and cut the plastic sheeting that runs down the front. Now we have our piece of plexiglass ready to go. We're going to do the same process. We're going to drill a hole in the center and we're going to cut it the same way we did our wood. Make sure you have plenty of excess around your pattern and mark your drill hole in the protective sheet with your quarter inch bolt. When drilling plexiglass, go slow, allowing your drill bit to do the work. This will prevent cracking. Sandwich the plexiglass to the board with the quarter inch bolt in place and secure it to the table saw. The wood will prevent the back portion of the mirror from getting scratched during this process. With the blade barely touching the plexiglass, nick a shallow cut in the bottom surface of the material and rotate. 
Gradually raise the blade the same way as you did for the wooden board. One eighth of an inch plexiglass may require up to seven to 10 turns. And there you have another perfect circle cut on a table saw. I'm inside right now next to a conventional oven that's been preheated to 250 degrees. I have my parabolic shape and I have my plexiglass mirror. What we're going to do is we're going to take the protective coating off of our plexiglass mirror. That'll prevent it from melting to the mirrored surface. We're going to take both of these and line them up perfectly and place them in the oven. With the mirrored surface up, Place your project in the center of the oven. It is best to use the bake setting at 250 degrees. When completed, the plexiglass mirror should form fit to the parabolic shape. The baking process usually takes 10 to 15 minutes. If you did everything correctly, you should have something that looks like this. If you get stress marks on your mirror, don't get too upset. It just means your temperature was too high. Making these becomes a little bit more of an art than a science. When we come back, we're going to show you how to take old used canvas and make a great base for an art project.